North Country towns are still struggling to find public works workers, people to drive plows, drive trucks, fire engines. You get the picture. It's been a pandemic thing, but it's also been because you have to get this special training to drive a truck, and that training costs a lot of money, and lots of people are like, nah, it's not worth it. Messina in St. Lawrence County is taking matters into its own hands. They basically said, we'll learn how to do the training ourselves so we can offer it for free and even have people working while they learn. That's today's story of the day. Support for Story of the Day comes from Long Run Wealth, an SEC-registered investment advisor in Lake Placid, providing comprehensive wealth management, retirement, and financial planning solutions. LongRunWealth.com. Hey, I'm David Summerstein. It's Wednesday, July 12th. First up, let's start with more details about the flood damage in Long Lake. A small dam there for Jennings Pond was breached, and major roads between Newcomb, Long Lake, and Blue Mountain Lake were washed away. The Route 30 bridge is back open, but Route 28N to Newcomb is still closed. Emily Russell spoke with folks in Long Lake about the storm and its aftermath. The heavy rain began on Monday night. Sam Keller was at his home in Long Lake. He says he didn't take the storm very seriously at first, but the rain just wouldn't let up. It was a steady tropical-like rain, heavy. We kept looking at the radar, and it was just hovering over us. Keller is a landscaper from Long Lake. His house is on higher elevation, so wasn't at real risk for flooding, but plenty of places in Long Lake are. Keller kept monitoring the rain from Monday night into early Tuesday. It went through the night. I was up every hour on the hour. I said, we're going to expect some damage. <laughs> We were dispatched around midnight, between midnight and 12.30, for a flooded basement. That's Paula O'Brien Perino. She's a firefighter in Long Lake and says that call was the first of many. While preparing to respond to that, we were dispatched to another, a second basement flooding. Uh, So we had to divide our troops, (laughs) divide and conquer. While they pumped out the second basement, they got a third call. The main road into Long Lake, Route 30, was flooding. And it was flooding right in front of O'Brien Perino's home and business. She manages the Long Lake Diner and Owl's Head Pub. So divide and conquer again. Her husband monitored the flooding around their property, while O'Brien Perino stayed focused on the larger flood response. A lot of folks in Long Lake were up all night helping neighbors, feeding emergency responders, checking in on friends and family. O'Brien Perino says Long Lake also got a lot of help on Tuesday from nearby communities and state agencies. As a small, very small rural community, we sure have some pretty great people here that can come together. Just knowing who to call, that's when it counts when you know your community and everybody just jumps in. There's a lot of work ahead for Long Lake. A lot of folks' homes were flooded. Some people had to be evacuated. The nearby Adirondack communities of Newcomb and Blue Mountain Lake were also hit really hard by flooding on Monday night. Lisa Johnson manages Hamilton County's Department of Public Works. She says some of the worst damage was on Route 28 to Newcomb. So a long portion of it was closed to traffic as of Tuesday night. Photos show the road fully torn apart by the force of the flood. I mean, it's beautiful pavement. It was, had recently been done. It looks great. And then it's like ribbon candy broken kind of. It's just, you know, this long thing that's just kind of been scrunched up in, in waves. Johnson says that kind of damage takes time to repair. She's urging folks just to avoid that area of the central Adirondacks entirely. That will give crews time and space to repair the roads around Newcomb, Blue Mountain Lake, and Long Lake. Really, at this point, If you are expecting to need to get from point A to point B going through Long Lake, you shouldn't even try, even if the road seems to be open. (laughs) like You're not going to get past that intersection for a little bit. Patience is key right now. This is usually the busiest time of year for Adirondack tourist towns like Long Lake. So that patience can be hard to come by, both for visitors and for business owners like Paula O'Brien Perino. She's the firefighter that owns the pub and diner. Still, O'Brien Perino says she's hopeful. I'm trying not to get a little nervous about that, but I have faith that we'll be, we'll be all right. County and state road crews will continue to assess the damage and make repairs in the coming days and weeks. Emily Russell, North Country Public Radio. 
The village of Tupper Lake's longtime mayor won't run for re-election. Paul Maroon has held the office for 13 years. He told the Adirondack Daily Enterprise that it was an extremely difficult decision not to run for another term, but he said he doesn't think being mayor is best for his personal life and he wants to leave on a, quote, good note. Maroon lost the Republican Party nomination for mayor to town councilwoman Mary Fontana last month. She's currently the only candidate in the race. Maroon will remain in office until the end of November. The ongoing worker shortage has been particularly hard on North Country public works departments. We're talking plow drivers, truck drivers, highway construction crews. That's partly because of recently changed federal regulations that make commercial driver's licenses, CDLs, more difficult to obtain. In St. Lawrence County, Messina may have found a solution. Amy Feireisel reports. The ongoing shortage of commercial driver's license, or CDL drivers, really took hold during the coronavirus pandemic. Marty Miller, the superintendent of public works for the village of Messina, says the department used to get 20 to 30 applicants for an open job. Now two to three is the norm. It was difficult to hire people that had a CDL, and it was very difficult for me to hire ones that didn't have a CDL because they would have had to go to a training school. That training school is a new federal requirement from last February when the government changed CDL license requirements. In the past, you got a permit, studied independently, and then did a road test. Now you have to take what's called entry-level driver training. This is a course with a certified instructor. There are very few of these courses in the North Country. There is one at SUNY Canton. It takes eight weeks and costs $7,000. When Marty Miller from Messina heard about the change, his first thought was this. I mean, if you're you know, 20 years old, are you going to go pay six, $7,000 to go to a truck driving school and get your training? No, because um, most people don't have that money, right? But here's the thing. You need a CDL license in public works. It's required to drive a dump truck, a garbage truck, a plow. So Miller thought of a workaround. He decided to get certified as a trainer so that he could offer in-house free CDL license training to employees. It's a big deal because it opens the door for a lot of different people to put in when they do have a job opening. His idea is that the employee can work and make money while doing their training. I can hire somebody and all I ask them to do is to go get their permit. And that's like $35, I think it is. Then I will train you in-house Along at the same time, you're still a benefit to the village of Messina because I can still work you doing other jobs that doesn't include driving. Miller's hope that this will open the door to younger applicants is already coming to bear fruit in his most recent hire, a young man who just graduated high school. He did a job shadow with Miller through BOCES in the spring. Miller hired him for the summer and then offered him a full-time job. Because he's an outstanding worker, 19 years old asked him to get his permit, and then we'll train him to get his CDL. And it's a little, it's actually a lot of work on my part, but I'm happy to do it um, to make this program work. So, Miller will start training his new employee this month. Amy Feireisel, North Country Public Radio. We have more news all the time on our website, ncpr.org, and we have a new survey there. We're about to launch a new series on health care in the North Country, the good, the bad, the ugly. And before we do, we need you to tell us what's really going on. Fill out our new survey about health care. It's at ncpr.org slash survey. Help us get our reporting right. Fill out the health care survey today at ncpr.org slash survey. Thank you very much for contributing to our reporting. Music today by I Am Snow Angel of Lake Placid and Evan Veenstra of Gananoque. I'm David Summerstein, North Country Public Radio.